Hey there guys, I'm Lee Williamson and today I'm going to teach you how to work in the F-Curve Manager in Cinema 4D. Now originally when I started Cinema 4D I was trying to use Dynamics to animate objects because I was a pretty rubbish animator until I learned the fundamentals. So it was just a simple animation of a scissors bouncing on a plane uh, and hopefully this dispels that F-Curve Manager and makes him feel a lot more comfortable in it. Without further ado, let's dive in. Now, when animating in Cinema 4D, it can be really overwhelming. Uh, but you just have to start off with the most simplistic things first. Uh, and, and trust me, you will eventually get the hang of it. So I want to animate the scissors bouncing um, on the floor. I'm just going to fall out the sky and hit the floor. So firstly, I will take the scissors and I want to just rotate it 90 degrees. And I will just make sure that I close up the scissors. There we go. Right, so first things first, click on the scissors, go in your coordinates, and you go to the Y manager, Y is up and down. Uh, drop a keyframe there, and just place anywhere between 15 and maybe 20 keyframes. Drop another keyframe and drag it high into the air and press record. Boom, look, you've animated already. Now, when something hits, it doesn't exactly hit the ground. It actually will always bounce once or twice before it hits the ground. So let's do that. So I'm gonna drag a couple more keyframes down. I'm gonna make it bounce up into the air. And then back down again cool look like that if you notice it doesn't ease in very nicely so I'll show you how to resolve this you right click animation show F curve and this is your bouncy scissors now usually when you see a bouncy ball uh, it tends to bounce more like this so essentially exactly the way you see it is the way it's going to be drawn so if you go into your curve, you press shift, you can break these arcs. In fact, I don't even need that middle one, so let's just delete that. And boom, boom, that looks a lot more realistic. Boom, boom, right. Now, when this hits, hits. Okay, first things first. This is going right through the canvas here, so you can just lift it up higher. Make sure that matches it too. Boom, boom. All right, when it does hit the first time around, it's more than likely gonna rotate now down onto its face side. So if you go into your scissors, uh, currently it's at 90. Let's drop a keyframe there. And when it gets to 28, we're gonna put it to zero. And it's going to hit the floor. Boom, boom. Now it's probably going to have one more bounce if I think about it. So if you can go back to your scissors, right click on the Y, it show F curve. You can just add in one more. So you hold down control, whack in another keyframe, and lift it up. Now this one's going to be a lot smaller, so if you highlight these two keys, press S, you can zoom in nice and close. And you can make this tinier. So now when it bounces, it's going to go boom, boom, boom. Fantastic. Now, this is more than likely going to also open up. So the way I've modeled this, I can also open up the scissors. So if I go to my cloner and I... There we go. So, boom, hits there, drop in a keyframe, and it's gonna open up uh, pretty swiftly. Let's give it about 25 angle. Boom, there we go, so it's opening up. Now, a nice way to actually know that you've hit the ground is you can either look on your side view of your camera and you've noticed the plane is here, so actually the scissors hasn't really hit the ground when I was animating it. 
I tend to like to do is I can sometimes drop in a infinite light, put it high into the air and rotate it and put a shadow on it. So let's just put an area shadow. You can't see it in the view. So if you go into your options and you choose shadows, you can see it in your viewport. So it's just a nice and realistic way to see things. And now, Another way to go into your animation editor is to actually click animate and you don't see all your keyframes at first. So if you go into view automatic mode and then let's see, what is it? Uh, yeah, you press S on your keyboard and you should see all the keyframes. So now you can see everything and I can click on my Y value here, look at the F curve and right. So when this hits, it hits the ground perfectly there. But the second time around over here, it's actually not lined up with the ground as you see. So I can just take these two keyframes and drag it down like that. So now it should fall, boom, boom. Or if you feel more comfortable doing this in your camera view, you can just go and in front view. You can also line it up this way around. Let's go back to the original view. And uh, I prefer just to see it that way around. Boom, boom, boom. Now usually when the scissors falls down, it's more than likely gonna change um, or it's positioned the first time it lands because it's probably hit and then fall a little bit to the left or the, to the right. So we can do that. You go into your scissors, you go to coordinates and you can either do the X value or you can do the Z value. So scissors goes down, put a keyframe on your Z value and let's just animate a little bit over there, boom. So now you can see the scissors will fall down, bang, bang, bang. Let's just check what that looks like in the F curve manager. So we are animating this value. Now it's more than likely only gonna slow down at the very end. So let's just curve this in over there. And have that slowly coming in. Boom, boom. Right. Perfect, so we have an animated scissors. Uh, see, it was not at all intimidating. A little bit more effort, one step at a time, and eventually you get there. Uh, if you find yourself getting into a little bit of a bind, please just don't uh, delete your file. Uh, just finesse the one you started off on is the best piece of advice I can give. Hope you enjoyed that guys. If you want to know more about animation and Cinema 4D, I'd highly recommend going to School of Motion and doing the Animation Boot Camp and doing the 3D course Cinema 4D Base Camp. You don't want to spend all your time on YouTube trying to get little small scraps. You want to do the hardcore meaty stuff and really get it down as soon as possible. And yes, it costs a little bit of money, but it's well worth it. I'll be sure to send you the links on the courses that I did. Cheers, guys.